are here um, also with the 25th anniversary of the Salamanca Statement. And much of the discussions today was about looking back. In which we're celebrating the legacy 25 years later and the ways in which that has moved on. And as you mentioned here, currently we're living in a time of change with conflict, with climate, with migration, things that are providing challenges to different systems. Second, coherence. Uh, we can have the best prospect in, in the world for education, but if the other policies, socio-economic policies, policies on refugees, policies on environment, are not coherent with the view on inclusion, we are doomed to fail. And what I think was added to that was the sense of who is excluded in your country. So that very much matters depending on the context. And the context will make a difference as to the children that are currently in your country context invisible. And it's how do we address the needs of those children with the intersectional aspects. This idea of inclusion as a process. Um, as we heard in the ministerial panel, it's a road that we are traveling on and it's a road um, that I don't think we see, we'll see the end of. Um, it's something that we're always striving for and always aiming to achieve. And initiatives and progress that is taking place now as we speak will take a lot of years to materialize. Education systems, we've heard it as transforming mindsets. Uh, we've also heard it about transforming people, so really ensuring that we're able to achieve the full potential of all learners inside the system. As one person phrased it, bringing people to the limits uh, of their potential and beyond. And the idea behind that is that we're not only looking at uh, schools as a system, but transcending beyond schools and education. So looking at uh, engagement of parents, the engagement of communities, the engagement of young people, the engagement of different stakeholders um, in society. And trying to again broaden that definition to say that no, this is about something that transforms our entire society and is necessary for that reason. Looking at the high level around what needs to happen at the, at the political level, but also thinking about some of the practical applications and that when people were talking, they weren't all saying this is perfect. Mm. Um, and so we saw things like ideas of having flexibility in the curriculum, bringing back the context, supporting schools to have a school for all, with that real hands-on, how can we enable teachers to feel valued? We need to recognize um, the agency of teachers as leaders and give them the freedom to be able to do their job. Central to all of this is, is, is children. And so it's about hearing the voices of youth, thinking about how we might implement what they have to say, and remembering that all children count, all children count. And that we all have a role to play in making sure that uh, every learner does indeed matter, and that we are translating what are, is often very um, important principles um, into, uh, in effect, practice. Yeah.